Oh my, it's Kelly White. Hey, it's James Grand Pog. What are you up to? Thinking about changing the world. Uh, me too. We should do a show together. What would it be about? Let me show you. Hi, we. Hi, 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 James. Autumn clothes. Let's go. I love it. Isn't it like snuggly weather now? It is. It is here in San Diego. It's kind of chilly. It's gotten down to the fifties. I guess would be lower fifties. I know for a lot of people. And you're what's your okay? Our temperature right now is (laughs) sixty-eight. Doesn't make any sense. But we're having a big rainstorm. So if you hear a big kaboom, that's from outside. We might be having one too. So we don't know from moment to moment what the weather is going to be. We had a lightning storm last week. Hey, we didn't get together last Monday because of uh, the Facebook droppage. You mean during Mercury retrograde? That was pretty fascinating, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, a couple of friends of mine have spoken to me this morning, called me up. Um, not in a panic, but it's like, what's going on? So I said, um, six planets in retrograde. And thank you for sending the October report. You're so welcome. Jordy, yeah. thanks. Oh, good. I love yes. hi, Jordy. Jordy, and uh, would you read to tell people what's going yeah. on? Yeah. Right so let's thought, so let's just talk about this for a bit. Now we have two planets that went direct, so we have four retrogrades. So imagine how crazy this is. It's, it's like doing the Watusi, James. It's like two here, two there. The fox trot here. It's all back and forth. So right now we have Pluto that did go direct. Pluto in Capricorn went direct. So let's talk about that just for a second, because that means that anything that has been hidden for the last several months is going to come right out. Best time for therapy. You decide you think you need therapy. This is the time to do it because Perfect. Pluto's direct and it always is about things that are hidden. And now the other one that went direct is Saturn went direct. Oh, thank God. Thank God. And let me tell you what that means, everybody. It means taking responsibility for yourself. And because it's in Aquarius direct, taking responsibility for humanity. So make some changes. This is the really the time to rebuild your life. This is the time to do it. Now, and it's all about the responsibility that you have to be responsible for everything you say, think and write and act. Which interest. I can't wait to talk about our topic tonight. Because that's the truth. You really do have to take responsibility. And then on October 18th, so a week from today, which would be really interesting because we're going to be doing a show. It'll be really interesting. Mercury goes direct. Oh, celebration. Which that day is going to be a wobble day, right? Just just know that. And Jupiter goes direct the same day. So that's going to be like, whoa, what's going on here? But we can breathe. We can breathe. Breathe. We can breathe. And then th- that just remains Neptune and Uranus as retrograde. So after a week from now. So it's really been a, you know, a hard month. And we're not out of it because this month also has a lot of squares, a lot of issues, a full moon that's intense. So we still are not quite out of any woods yet. But just know if your energy gets wobbly, start thinking about things like what you can do with your life. It's a good it's a good place to go. If you need something to think about, what should I do with my life? This is a m- great month to figure that one out. I, I've been thinking about that. Honestly, I have been. And I've no. started a new book. I started a new book. And it's a book about, it's a, a novel I've done, never done before. And it's something about, it's a, It's just that I'm going to see what happens. And it's bringing issues from the dark to the light. And 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 I, it's funny you talk about that because that's what it's all about. It's, I don't so know it's, what it's about, but it's- a, Okay, that's really interesting because we're talking about the Pluto, the shadow side. So are you talking about bringing the shadow out? The shadow out. Like when I worked with Debbie Ford, the shadow of themselves, I want to do something with that because that really, um, I love the shadow. And, and, and I love the shadow, but I like it needs to be spoken about and it's perfect for yeah. Pluto time. Yeah, uh, probably, while you were talking about that, I read a book many, many years ago, and it, I'm sure you've read it, the Pluto book by Liz Green. You know, the Liz astrologer, Green. the astrologer. The astrologer Green. Oh my she God! Read, it was the first one of the first book astrology books I've read, and it was called Pluto by Liz Green, and it was fantastic. Oh, I bet it was fantastic because it back not that long ago, Pluto was not a planet. That's right. It was this That's hidden right. kind of thing that came Which out. Makes sense. It makes so much sense, right? Oh, she was a wonderful astrologer. Yeah, Liz Green. Yeah, I forget the name of it. I have it somewhere, I think. Oh, I'd love to look at that. That... Yeah, I can see the cover of it in front of me. There's red Pluto in red. And Liz Green. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That would be so interesting. 1985, I booked that book. 
Oh my gosh. Well, it's a great time. If you're going to start writing, this is great, James, that you've had the idea and that you're doing that. The other thing that's great for this time is uh, connecting with loved ones on the other side. And I know that you're going to be doing a couple, yeah. three events, three yeah. events. I, I find this time of the year for, for the fall, right. autumn, of course, we know that October is the veil is thinnest. So yeah. for, in my mediumship, I have found that when I do the autumn time demonstrations, September, October, November, the connections are really, really strong. So I'm doing three demonstrations. I'm doing this Friday night. I'm doing one. Um, and then I'm doing one the following Friday. Well, Saturday, I'm doing another one. It was in New Jersey, but there's something else. But for, so Friday and Friday, I'm doing it consistently for, um, so the evening, wow. right there, the evening of spirit, there it is, 45th, there. sign up here, vampire.com. Yeah, I haven't done them in a while. And I really enjoy doing them during this time yeah. of year because weird, quirky things come through. Oh my God, that's so true. It's an interesting time. in a while, I get some really fabulous information because as you know, you don't work for a while as a medium and it builds up and builds up and builds up and you're, yeah. you know, I'm constantly teaching, but it's like you're open to receiving. And I always, before I do a demonstration, I will always ask the spirit world to give me something different, give me a different way in, bring some new information, see it in a different way. And as you know, Kelly, it's just yeah. wild what comes through. So Yeah, but I've been with you. Some of the stuff that comes through is, <laughs> yes. it's unbelievable, actually. It's now unbelievable. You, you're, It's extraordinary. And this is the best time to do it. I think it's such a veil is thin. It's unbelievable. That's right. That's right. Halloween. Halloween. Halloween Eve. So. So. Da, da, da. Da, da. So it's an interesting subject. Near death experiences we talked about tonight, and it's um I think it's there. It's in the zeitgeist, and um mm -hmm. it's there. Um, I'm in the midst of developing a TV show regarding it because it's out there and it's going to happen, mm -hmm. and um it's really an interesting subject because many people have them. Um, it's become more and more popular, of course. Um. Very much so. I know you had one. I did have one, but I, one thing I do want to say about it, it's which I find fascinating, is that these experiences, that these shared experiences, go across every religion, every culture. It doesn't matter. Everybody right. can experience or has experiences from different points of view, and yet still come up with the same information. Fascinating to me. It's really true, and and there are common themes, of course, and mm -hmm. MDE, common themes, and there are some that stand out. Um, and there are many, many books that have been written on near-death experiences. Okay. Um, and one was done mm, several years ago. I want to say five years ago, six years ago. And it was a gentleman came through uh, and authored this book who talked about the darker side of the experience, of coming to the hellish kind of experience. So we're going to talk about that a little bit, too, as we go on here. But Oh, that's, that's interesting. interesting. Wow, right. I didn't know that one. Well, let's talk about first, what is a near-death experience? Well, for me, and Kelly, you might have your own idea uh, about this, but for me, it is, um, hmm, well, from personally experiencing it, um, leaving the, the, the awareness of the physical body, the consciousness, if you will, and, and being out of it and being aware that you're almost passing to the other side of life, that the physical life is almost gone. Um, from my experience, I was, um, God, how many years ago? How many years? Probably 20 years ago now. But uh, I remember I was uh, very sick. Um, and I went to the restroom uh, to vomit, and I my head hit the sink. And I went blacked out on the floor, and I guess blood. I was bleeding all day. I was throwing up blood all day because I was I didn't know this, but I had a Mallory Weiss tear, which is esophageal esophagus oh. tear. And I would my stomach would fill up with blood, and then I'd, I'd vomit, and then I'd be fine for another half hour, and then and that was a whole day of that without me knowing. And I didn't want to go to the emergency room, but I, then about eight o'clock at night. I, I was with my friend Brian at the time, and I saw, thought, um, I got to, you know, I said, Brian, come help me. And I went to the restroom then, and they blacked out, and I remember I was out of my body. I was completely out of the body. There was no pain. I was just aware that I'm out of my body. I'm looking down at my body, and I'm like, wow. And there was no time. I was aware there was no time. I was thinking every moment of this. There was no time, no linear time. But I knew inside me this was not my time to pass to the spirit world. I just knew that. And immediately I saw in front of me my co cousin Patricia, who died of suicide, who wow. taught me metaphysics when I was a child. And I'd wow. seen her. She uh, completed suicide 30 years before, 40 years before. Interesting. Wow. And I would, of all people. And she said, she said telepathically to me, and I remember I, your personality stays the same. She said to me, don't worry, it's going to be over soon. And I said, over or over? Can you help me out? Because I'm in a bad place right here. <laughs> there. And she vanished. And I remember immediately I had this awareness of above me. There was like this, I'm going to say this cord 
uh, or this ribbon coming out of the top of my head, which fed into like this matrix of this matrix. And I remember that everybody has a cord or a ribbon on top of their head, which it's really interesting. I knew that every thought, word, act, thought, feeling mm -hmm. would have a color to it. And what you did or what you thought created this color and fed into that matrix. And every single person in the world would experience those fractions of what you you gave into it. At the end of our life, we look back and see the colors that we left behind or that we bled mm. into that matrix. And that was really interesting to me. So we gotta be careful. And that made sense to me because you gotta be careful of your thoughts, your, your your hacks, your words. That's really, those are real things. And I was like, wow, that is so cool. And I can't wait to, I, I guess, teach it, I was thinking. And then immediately of that awareness, I had an awareness of my father in a garden. And I went toward him and I could just say, Walk, not walk toward him, but was toward him. And he showed me a rose and he said, it's not your time. You have to go back. I knew he was 27 years old and he was in a tan suit. And he said, you, you've got to go back. And I went into that rose. And all of a sudden I heard my, a Brian who was next to me. And he said, James, wake up, wake up, wake up. And I remember I was back in my body. My eyes were opening. My, uh, and I remember the back of my head really hurt. He said, and I heard him say, wake up. And I opened my eyes and the words that in my mouth were dying is easy. Living is hard. Oh my God! And then I went to the hospital. I lost five points of blood, and I was there for two weeks with an esophageal tear, which they oh. that used to heal. And yeah, that was about. Oh and it was Thanksgiving God. time. Thanksgiving time. I remember that because I had a, a roommate in the hospital room with an eighty-two-year-old man who was senility, and he kept on eating a turkey turkey soup, and he said, "You can't have any. I can't." <laughs> So I remember oh, that. My that God. My, and, and, and I didn't know anything that would affect me until about a year after that, maybe a year and a half, I was doing these lectures every year in Arizona, this conference. And the, the leader of the conference, she came up to me and said, you know, I've seen him for many, many years. Your readings have changed this past year. They're very much on a higher level of awareness or, or maybe your guides are different. Or, and, you know, she, she, I thought, wow. And I looked at that, and it's true. There were, the, the messages were much more, we could say, philosophical, mm -hmm. spiritual a sense of oneness, a sense of more guidance in the messages, yeah. more than just evidential. So they did change. That makes a lot of sense, you know, adding that depth to it. The depth and you to actually it. have that experience. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So That's an extraordinary true. experience. Yeah. And you had one as well, yes? I did. So uh, this is, sounds oddballish, but when I was three oh, years no, old. I mean, we're, all me, oddballish. we're all oddballish, though. So. When I was three years old, I had encephalitis, which is an inflammation of the brain. And so inflammation of the brain was, I had a fever of 105 and I went, they took me to the hospital. I was in the hospital for a week and I went into a coma. Wow. Now my mother was a young mother and I was the only child. And she was, they were, I remember as I, they take, took my like lifeless body basically into the hospital and they were putting like vinegar on me and water and trying to get me to, you know, anyway, and then I went into a coma and here's what happened. I actually went through a whoosh of a tunnel. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to explain it other than it was black. And then when I got to, to the opening, which was this light, it was almost like a jello kind of an odd kind of a thing. And I kind of pushed through, like, like pushed through. And when I pushed through, there were two women there that were my aunts. Now I don't have aunts, both my mother and father had no sisters. So I never had an aunt. I don't, didn't even know, I'm only three. So I wouldn't really know the word aunt, but they both looked at me and I felt such love coming. And I just wanted to, oh, I just wanted to breathe and be with them. I just wanted this to end and just to be with them. And they said to me, I'm sorry, Kelly, you have to go back. They said, your mother will not be able to live her destiny. So you must go back because wow. had I died, my mother would have never become the person she was supposed That's to become. Right. And I went back. I remember the whoosh feeling back. And I remember the sadness and the loneliness and the depression. And about it was about from what I understand, I came to and then, I, you know, I was out of a coma. But it was a three day wow. uh, journey of hell for my mom and my dad. Wow. Wow. They wow. didn't expect me to live. But what's interesting is you've heard of um dr eben alexander who wrote oh, of proof, of heaven. Yes, proof of heaven so he had meningitis and i had encephalitis but they're both inflammation of the brain right. and so and he was a harvard surgeon for people who don't know who had 
a near-death experience. He didn't believe in any of this, never would have ever. He taught at Harvard. He was a surgeon. He never thought this way until he had a meningitis, a bacterial meningitis, and went into a coma. Didn't come out for a long time. I was in a coma for about a week, or no, about three days. And I think he was in a coma for several, for a long time. And then his story about his journey was pretty intense. And when he came out of it, he had sp he spent time with God. He spent time with the universe. He spent time. And this was a left brain surgeon who never would have ever talked about it. And he said, you know, they're going to make fun of me, but I'm still going to write about it. And he did write about it. He certainly did. And opened up a lot of minds with that. Opened up a lot of minds with this experience. Yeah. Right. He's still lecturing, still lecturing about it. That's, his work has changed to this type of work now. Which Isn't is, that fascinating? Yeah, like Brian Weiss, same thing. He was a Harvard grad or Yale right. graduate and changed right. to like that. So Very fascinating. Sick. Oh my gosh. Yeah, oh, oh, Rebecca. Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. She said, I either had a near death experience or an OOB out, out of body, of body when I was five during a tonsillectomy. Oh, I bet a gas mask was used back then. Remember sure. those? Sure. And I truly believe I had an overdose of ether. I found myself at this at the ceiling in the corner of my room, looking down on myself. I could see the doctors around me. I felt ageless. It seemed normal to be watching myself. My mind did not feel like that of a child. It felt like a soul. That's so true. And that's, Rebecca, thank you for saying that. I can still remember this experience like it was yesterday. Okay, thank you for saying that. I feel like, and I was a child development major. That was my bachelor's. I understand as a three-year-old, I wouldn't know the word destiny, but guess what? I knew it. I knew everything, sure. just like she just mentioned. Good. Sure. Thank you, Rebecca. I appreciate that. And that body experience is, is, is very similar, except I, I guess it's, it's just a matter of semantics. Near death, is you almost do die. Mm -hmm. And out of body experiences, you can have them. You can be trained to go out of your body. Um, the Monroe Institute trains people. Robert Monroe, um, back in, I think it's in the Carolinas, and the Monroe Institute actually teach people about leaving the, the conscious of the physical body stepping out. And that then you can have out of body experiences. Uh, that, that And people do have uh, consciously. We, we go out of our body all the time, but we're not conscious of it. But you, you right. can learn how to consciously. And near-death experiences where you almost are over to the other side of life. That right. Wrong. And That's some, it. and I think sometimes it's usually, though, that you, it's not your time to go. Yeah. So there are some commonalities that most people talk about. And what you mentioned, one, the tunnel. There's a sense or a feeling of going through a tunnel, being surrounded by a tunnel. Mm -hmm. And that many times there are people at the other side of that tunnel, you really relatives or or guides or people that you know. And there's, oh, no, well, I mean, some people have a sense of this bright light beautiful light. They can barely describe it. They call it God or they call it all these different things. Mm -hmm. It's this incredible love that they feel drawn to. I've, I've, I've been through that. Mm -hmm. um, there's also many times a sense of a life review can be happening very, very quickly because you're outside of linear time that you can have an awareness of things you've done in the past in the beginning of your life and how you affected other people that day. There is mm -hmm. a sense sometimes that people have a, a destiny sense of going back to accomplish to finish something. Um, mm -hmm. and I think sometimes I, I wonder sometimes if it has to happen for them to do that. You know, they have to have this new experience in order to accomplish yeah. that. That's, that's what I think, James. I, I think it it has some, on some level it must. Yeah. And, and many people talk about um, Jesus, and they see Jesus, sometimes they yeah. see, and, and sometimes, like I said, mentioned earlier, they can have hellish experience, they're darker experiences. Uh, I don't much, sorry, I don't remember the name of the book, but this gentleman had, he wrote a book about going to the darker sides. Now, to me, what that says, and I don't know till I pass mm -hmm. over either, but to me, I know that you go to, um, there are many spaces and places in the other realms, right? And, and that you tend to go to that space you've created based with your thought, with your mindset. So if there's something within you, whether it's fear-based or ignorance or, or, or a, a darkness or that's whatever that is, and you believe that, that you might experience that. I, I, I think that most of us are love beings. I don't believe in evil. I, I believe in right. love. I don't know what you believe, Sarah Kelly, but I believe yeah. in, in degrees of love, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's part of the ego, maybe, with the dark part of that. That's what I kind of always have thought, James. A little bit yeah. that it was the ego, you know, that there was something that maybe they had they had done some things that maybe they, you know, wanted to think about or something that, you know, they had um, guilt I, feelings I, of. I, I, yeah, Yes, something like okay. that could so, have uh, happened. And, and there's all that sense also of um, the life certainly changes usually with the near-death experience. Uh, and I know that, I, I was thinking about this earlier, to me, there are two commonalities of okay. that I have found that when people pass over like a mother or a, a, ch a child, I find that many, many times that when someone passes over like a child, it forces the, the mother and father or whoever, uh, partner, to go on their spiritual path, to be, um, awakens them to their spiritual yeah. truth. 
and really in a way it's a gift. And mm -hmm. perhaps that was also decided before they came back into the lifetime yeah. within that soul group before in the mm -hmm. pre-planning of that life that at this certain age, I'm going to go over first and it'll force you to go on your spiritual path. I think that's more true than not. Yeah, I do too. You know? I, I absolutely agree with that. Yeah. I mean, and, 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 yeah. I was going to say, I think there are, you know, certain things that when you've had a near death experience that you, when you come back, as you said, you became more philosophical, you became deeper, you became understanding of maybe patience and tolerance patience, and forgiveness. Yeah. And those are the kind of, the kind of things that people would learn from some of these experiences. If, if you have one, and one of them would be to be grateful. To be grateful, grateful for every moment of life. For every moment of life. It's a gift. I mean, it is a gift because you can't do those things, tangible things on the other side. You can do them, the physical things here. It's like the building blocks here. It doesn't happen on the other side. Um, we progress quicker here, believe it or not, than we do in the spiritual realms. Because here we really got to go through the, the grit of it all. Right, right. And, you know, the other thing is when you're on the other side, oh, well, let's look at this. Roxanne Kenning, I had a near-death experience at 29. My heart stopped. I wanted to stay and I was told it wasn't my time. I'll never forget the experience, right, Roxanne? Sorry that happened, but you just will never forget the experience. And had that during a Saturn return, if I could just throw yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Which You're is the major right. spiritual growth time of our lives. Huge. I got chills when you said that. That would have been a, a big, a big thing here. Big one. <laughs> a big one, you know. Um, I mean, it's a good question. Are these events, these near death experiences planned? It's a good question. I I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I think I think some are. I think some. I, I don't know. I yeah. don't know. It's hard to say. I mean, some of them could be based upon choices that we make, things that we do during the day that we just cho certain choices that we made. Right. I don't know. It's hard to say. So, so um, there's a question here from Ilu Sion. How can we be sure that what we see in a near death experience is what we will see when we die? Well, it's a great question. Yeah. Well, um, I, I, I would just say this. I, first of all, number one, it teaches you to go inside and understand who you are. Um, does it make sense to you? We have these experiences. Is something that would make sense for you to, to, to reach out, to have these, these values or look back right. to life and be able in a better way? Or, and if that's it, then when you pass over, you'll have that same experience of living those values. Right. And this is who you are. So what you see is what you get. Again, I always tell people, if you want a great experience, you pass out of this body at lifetime, look back and make sure you've had the best time. Do, the, do good, do good. Because when, right. when you get to the side, what awaits you is the good that you've done. Well, I'll tell you, I read, well, I saw this, it's so <laughs> true. I was watching this video and I'll have to post this. It was when I sent to you earlier. It was so fascinating. It was amazing. Wasn't amazing. it amazing? And I want to thank cool. Karen Glass. Thank you, Karen, for sending that to me because I thought it was phenomenal. But it's about a, a nurse who was from Wisconsin, I think. And um, she had a near-death experience. And while she was on the other side, she got to see her life in the future. And she got to see when one day, actually, what they did is they showed her in the in the past. And she there was a person at the supermarket. And she didn't have enough money for her children for food. So this nurse gave her money and said, no, no, I understand. I was a single mother here. Here's some money. And that woman, they showed her that woman in the future. And she was helping to raise money and to give money for food to other people. So that's the effect. As you've always said, be in a good mood, that mood translates. Be in a bad mood, that energy goes out. It's but they effect. showed her the good she had done in her life. And I thought that was my favorite part of that video. Yeah, it's really true. You want to have a life that you're very proud of, the good things that you yes. do. Because that's really who you are. Love is your soul. And, and even now when there's hard times in the world, we can't forget who we are. We are, we are love whether it's disrupted by, or we take a, a, a temporary right. disruption of things because we see how ugly things are out there, maybe to us, we gotta still remember who we are and we are loving beings right. and we'll never lose that. We'll never lose that. So harder it is, make it easier on yourself. So true. So Nancy Shob says, I had a near death experience when I was six years old. I fell through the ice and nearly wow. drowned. Wow. I felt a feminine presence holding me close to the whole of the ice. Wow. I felt safe, protected, warm, and unconditionally loved. It was so beautiful. That was great, Nancy. And that, that somehow affected Nancy's life. No doubt about it, because she remembers that experience right now. So that means that at some level, she remembered that going through her life. And probably that warmth, the compassion stayed with her. So how do we know that does that experience doesn't just shape our souls, you know, right. and experience that we go through? And it and would shape, I would think, uh, how you treat others, yeah, you know. Exactly. And also we're talking about fear and about belief systems and God and love. 
I mean, it would really carry you on. That's a that's a big one. I appreciate you sharing that. And I love the ones that when you're young like that. And isn't it interesting? Their memories are as sharp as a tack. What, what happens, this happens when they're young. You know, Kelly, I wanted to just quickly jump in about uh, the experience of being so left with Jesus and angels. Mm -hmm. Remember that there are so many levels of knowing and learning. And That's I just true. keep an open mind to anything. Absolutely. Whatever it is. Don't, don't, don't limit your belief system to a religious a dogma. No. Be open to everything. Uh, pure love, let's just call it. Maybe we don't have the words here in this level, but pure love. We are yeah. pure love. That, that's what you'll experience. If you give that out, you'll get it back. Absolutely. You Absolutely. Make Marie Beauchamp, do we have to actually die to have a near-death experience? I felt like I was slipping away when giving birth. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. Hi, Marie. Kelly, what do you think? Well, a near-death, the definition is that you've died. But, you know, I don't know, James. There's, but, I mean, there's no death. There's no death. So, so it's That's a level true. of consciousness. So, so yeah. I, you know, what we talk about is maybe the deeper levels of consciousness here uh, and awareness. So do you have to be physically not breathing? No, because a lot of new experience is still breathing or sometimes you don't breathe. Um, mm -hmm. But I think you can have um, a, 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 a near experience and be close to that state and get that and um, come back like I did. Yeah. Uh, there's different levels of it, if you will. Um, well, this is interesting. Dr. Um, Eben, the one we were Alex talking Eben. about, who wrote um, yeah. Yeah, the, the book after he had gone to the other side, he said, during my coma, my brain wasn't working improperly. It wasn't working at all. So interesting. it's interesting how science will go back and say, well, your brain was still. And he's like, no, I'm a neuroscientist. It was not working. The brain is tied to the physical. Yeah, yeah, the brain is tied to the physical. The mind is eternal. Exactly. The mind is eternal. The brain shuts off. It's an organ. It shuts off mm -hmm. at the physical. Yeah. You know, just like um, stroke of insight, the lady who had the stroke, who was also a neuroscientist, and she had a stroke, and she's like, I got to remember what I'm experiencing right now because I, I do this for a living. I got to remember this. And she was aware of a consciousness that she had, and it was just she was aware of all the energies in the room, of people coming into the room. I remember one said, I don't want that doctor in this room because he has bad energy, pushed him away with the energy. So it's still alert, and that's the mind working, not a brain. Um, so interesting. Listen Stroke to this. Inside. Elizabeth uh, Glomsky says, my husband had a near-death experience. He was in a coma for two weeks. They told his family not to expect him to live. The only memory he has of that time was that he was in a prison on death row. And every time they tied to, tried to put him to death, something would stop it, like the power would go out in the electric chair. He said this changed his life and helped us meet and marry. So something like that may have put him on the right track. Wow. That's a big one. Oh, that's a big one. That's a yeah. pretty good one. That's, yeah. that's a book right there, I'll tell you the truth. That's yeah. a real good one. Marie. Maria Rodriguez. I had a near-death experience when I was 34. My family was waiting, and I was sent back. Very common in near-death experiences. And I was and I was told, told it was not my time. I need to go back, and I was sent back, and I became a totally new person. Yes, Maria, that's exactly what we hope to happen. And near the experience, become a totally different person, different perspective, if you will, different right. perspective. And also that sense when near the experiences, which is pretty calm, which is lovely, is that sense of oneness, that we're all connected. Yeah. Oneness. And I always say love is oneness. Love equals one, one, love equals one, one, omnipresent, nurturing energy. O -N -E. Oh, I love omnipresent. that. Nurturing energy. That's where I define love. And when you have a near death experience, there is that yeah. sense of oneness that we're all connected as one. And I always say the two major two illusions we have in this three dimensional world death, because there is no death. There is no such thing as death. You can't kill energy, it just transforms. And the other is separativeness. Right. We're all separated, but we're not, we're actually one. And I also okay. say, if you see the diversity in people, see that diversity because that's God, the difference in each person. That's what you want to learn from. And that's what we should be celebrating. The spir first spiritual law is the law of oneness. The law of oneness. No such thing as separation. I am you, you are me. That's right. That is the truth. Um, it's a, Sue Wells says, my mom used to say, your spirit will always be near you because spirit lives after the body expires. That's right. Oh, that's great. That's great. Wow. I love that. Um, wow. This is so fascinating. Um, okay, Karen Bennett. For children who have near-death experience with parents who don't believe or discourage them talking about it, do these do those memories stay dormant? I maybe they may stay dormant, but um, it's an implicit memory. It's yeah. um, called implicit, and so it would go back, um, and um, they could bring all of a sudden they may have an, a, a feeling of something, 
And then that could open that door. Because the soul never forgets. The soul the never forgets. Soul will up. And as Kelly said, when certain mm -hmm. events happens or uh, 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 something triggers that, I, I think that the soul will bring it right back to the surface. So I don't think Absolutely. It, it may burn for a little bit, but it'll come out. And uh, they're so important, I, I think, in our own soul's development that it will come out in some way. Oh, I, I think it does too. So Elizabeth Preston says, does a near-death experience happen every time someone goes into a coma? What about medical-induced coma? I, I don't know the answer to that. So I'm going to say I don't know the answer to that because I, I, I don't. I, I, I do know in comas, we can do a, whole, do a whole show in comas, but I know from my experience with patients who have um, talked about it from the other side, and, and living people, by the way, for comas, that they were um, very aware, even Alzheimer's patients, very aware of themselves um, at different moments. Not all the time, but at moments they were aware of themselves. And many times there were Alzheimer's patients who would talk about being comas, and they say they went out visiting family members still living on the earth, and they would see them on the, they visit them on the earth in different places. So they're very aware. But not always do I think they're aware of the coma, it conscious, so they were. Well, it's funny. I had a client um, who was in a three months in a coma with COVID, actually, uh, in March, March, April, and May of 2020. And when he came out and he was able to, you know, down the line, I could see him and talk to him on a Zoom. I mean, like months later, I said to him, what was that like for you to be in a coma? Do you have any memories of it? And he said, well, I hope you understand what I'm about to say. And I'm like, oh, I'm all ears. <laughs> and he said, uh, I I saw Jesus. Now, this person is a Catholic person, and he said, I saw Jesus. And That's I said, and, and what was the conversation about? And he said, he just hugged me and smiled, and I knew with love. And then he said to me, I've got to make some changes. And I'm going to tell you what, this man turned his life around like nobody's business. When I tell you he was on a tear, <laughs> He was on a tear. I actually, before he went, he before he had COVID, I said to him, don't take that trip. I have a bad feeling. Please don't take that trip. And he took it and he ended up very ill. I remember, that, that. remember, I remember that story? Well, yes, what a, a, what a life people. change. Yeah. Well, you had a couple of those people. And I think one you warned and they passed with COVID. Well, that's correct. One died and one lived. Yeah. yeah. And you warned them. I did. I remember when they were going down the other, you were, they were passing out. I remember you were talking to me. It's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. So it's interesting. Kate. Yanchenko says, when you're experiencing near-death experience, do you actually go to heaven? Well, so what is heaven? So is heaven a place you go to or is it a state of mind? So I would say it's a state of mind. So all around us is heaven. So it's a different level yeah. of consciousness. So it's not a certain place. It's all around you. So and that space, you can create your heaven or your hell based on how you live your life. But the love that you give out, that the love that you make is the love you take, as we talked about. So you can have that heavenly world all around you. So it's it's leaving the conscious of the physical realm and going to another level of consciousness, which yeah. is all around us. So I would look at, like to look at it that way. That's, that's, that's a good that's way. And your friend who saw Jesus, again, it's a religious um, a depiction. So a Catholic background, but of course I have Jesus. Right. Um, a Muslim would be different. Buddhists would have different. So Absolutely. There's systems there. And even the man, I told this to someone today in my soul care this afternoon, um, when I was doing a reading for somebody in the audience and her aunt was coming through, you'll remember this, Kelly. And I remember at the side of my eye, her father who had passed came over to, toward me walking with his arms, yes. his arms across. And I said to him telepathically, as I'm working with her, I said, yeah. I know this is your daughter. Do you want to speak to her? And he said, why would I want to? I didn't believe in this in life. Why would I believe in it in death? <laughs> So you become the same awareness or your mindset. You became, you don't change. That's who he was. And what happened was amazing. He watched the process and okay, that's okay. Just come watch the process. Feel free. He watched the process of communication and eventually got into it. And he said, wow, this is great. Can I try it? I said, Go for it. And he was able to give his daughter a message. He totally understood. Evidential message. He understood. And he was able to tell her he's sorry about certain things he did in his life. And she forgave him. I remember that because it was so healing for her. It was yeah. so healing. And the whole audience just could be, you know, breathe a sigh of, oh, my God, they could feel that uh, healing. It was so, That was incredible. It was an incredible one. And another one, just, just on the side of it, I remember that once there was a reading with a young man who completed suicide. And he was in a, a panel, wooden panel room and described it to his aunt who was in the audience. And uh, that was his be bedroom. It was uh, down by the garage. And he killed himself because um, the father, I think, was having an affair or something happened, something weird. And he didn't forgive his dad or something. And 
he was stuck in his mindset still in this room because he used to run into this room when his some of his dad and he used to go hide in this room and stay in this room and he still was in this room after he left the body he didn't know where to go and I, I talked to him about forgiving his father and we and someone else in the spirit world was helping him and eventually we got him to change his mindset and he was more open now he understood where his father was at where this person was at and he was more open to receive and immediately there were those in the spirit world just came and took him and he was ready to see them and be with them and he understood things more so we can lock our minds to a certain mindset yeah. and and we talked about earthbound look at earthbound but there certainly is a mindset we can block ourselves into for that period of time definitely <laughs> weird huh laura essig my daughter and oh, i had okay. Surgery. okay afterwards she said why were you guys talking about my bf i said what do you mean how do you know what we were talking about she said i was there the whole time you guys just couldn't see me oh my god that's a great yeah. one that's a great one. i have to answer this one yeah nancy ross says many re people report experiencing depression after a near-death experience which i did at three uh, have you thought of having counseling sessions or support groups for these people it's such a great idea i'd be happy to but if I had a group, I'd be happy to. I think it's a great idea. Uh, I was going to mention earlier, Kelly, that um, for, that people who had near their experiences will often talk about this two very famous cases where there was one about this boy sneaker was in the outside ledge of the hospital. This little boy, and he talked about the hot the red sneaker on the seventh floor ledge, and how would he know that if he was in this? And is he was dead and he said because he popped out of his body and he saw that sneaker and there they found the sneaker and another time there was near the experience someone talked about the the surgeon's pens in the pocket the different types of pens that were there the brands of pens sure enough there were now how would this person know this well he was, they were out of their body and they had near-death experience and when they came back they saw that so that's very common wow that's amazing uh janice godwin the biggest thing in memory is the abundance of love and acceptance and beauty that's Very right true. and not to find it for someone else but within yourself right so marie bates curry i have had an ndae i was in 2003 but i remember every bit of it like it was yesterday i get yeah. that had a severe closed skull injury from being in a car wreck it was absolutely beautiful wow that's, and it can happen from a car accident. It can happen from an illness. It can happen from some severe tra traumatic event, I even think. Wow. And here's George N. Hansen Marknick. Interesting. I was 16 when I had near the experience. There you go. Okay. I saw a man, a little boy, and would have a happy life. I saw many spirits I knew. Some I did not on the hill in the beautiful meadow. My cousin was 19 when he passed, ran toward me. The divine voice, I love that. The divine voice was calm, strong, got louder as I got closer to my cousin. I was given a choice by the Lord, divine voice. I cried to send me home and boom, I landed my body in my bed. I met that 19 year old man in the movie when I was 17. Wow. wow. What a great story. Thank you for that. Wow. Um, oh, I love this one. Renee Hounsel says, once we experience us as love, that expansive there is a profound wanting to bring that to everyone oh true true the sense of purpose right and life force energy is everything is more vivid after that near-death experience that is very true, true sweetheart. thank you for sharing that it's very true very very true you're right on very true mm. yeah it, it, it's almost something that you, you have to share because it's so, so profound it's just right you share with everybody Kat Lynn says, absolute acceptance, peace, and love beyond description. True. Yeah. So There's true. No word. We're limited no, here. Right. We're so limited. And we're limited on time here, too. We're limited yeah. on time, which on that side, when you have those experiences, you're, there is no time. It's, it's an interesting dichotomy, I guess, in a way. We're here in the physical vibration because... I don't know. I, I'm very aware of it. I'm where you got to live in the moment and do the things you have to do. But when you're aware there's something bigger and out there, like wow, I can't wait to get home. But right. you got to do the work here. You know, you can't you can't think that way. You got to do the work you have to do here because that time will come eventually for all now, of us. But he, here's an interesting question from Therese Holiday. She says, "Can someone come very close when taking ayahuasca?" So I've never had. I've never done that. So I can't answer that, James. And I have, and I would say yes, because um, I did that in Brazil many years ago, uh, many, many years ago, before it was even known as a thing. And um, my mother was there, but I also had um, my higher self, uh, I experienced, 
And it was me, my eyes, every time I had a regression or a vision, my eyes and my mustache were always there. And this was my higher self, the golden turban. And in this uh, vision, in this moment, it, this vision, this higher self gave me a, a purple amethyst ring and said, this is your initiation. We want you to know this. Okay. This is as close to that NDE also, right. by the way. And then a week later, I had people down there. Um, I was sponsoring a, a trip down to the spiritual centers around Brazil. And before we went home, some people wanted to go to souvenirs. They wanted to go to this jewelry store in Bahia. Uh, and I thought, what the heck am I going to ask? So I walked to the counter to this lady and I said, do you have any men's rings, like the amethyst rings? She goes, why do you ask? I said, well, I thought here at a jewelry store. And she said, well, it's funny you say this because a week ago, a man came in and ordered this ring. We made it for him. He never came back. So she opens up the second drawer, pulls out this amethyst ring, the exact same ring in my vision, exact the shape. Oh, my God. And I tried my finger fit perfectly. So I bought that ring. And now it's gone. It's gone to somebody else. Someone stole it from me, actually, believe it or not. And uh, which hey, I guess they have to, but that was a uh, yes, I would say yes. I mean, ayahuasca, LSD, um, hallucinogens, certain mushrooms, that sort of thing, they they make the veil thinner. So, um, is that that's what it is? Oh, yeah, 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 it makes the veil thinner, and okay. you can have the profound experiences, but you got to be stable and you got to be grounded because you can't be jumping to the vibration which you're not used to quickly without being, I can just say, grounded or centered in your awareness who you are because it could be crippling i believe to the mind i, oh, I, I couldn't agree yeah. more that's why i've never wanted to go there but cat lynn has a good question she says james you mentioned about wanting to go back home can you give an opinion on whether those after near-death experience come back and have ambition to live a fuller life or they just want to go back home <laughs> good, oh, I, I, question. I think it's a good question i mean for cat cat i would say that most ndes that i'm aware of yeah. are, are be people that would, would want to make better their lives in some yeah. way I and better agree. lives of every other person and do something more purposeful in their lives. That is the yeah. most common after effect, if you will. For me, when I say, oh, go to home, to me, I'm just so aware of the spiritual work that I've been doing for 40 years. I think it's more of that, that I'm aware of so much of a spiritual, the spiritual realms that are around, that that's what I'm, I, I, I'm looking forward to. Um, I don't, yeah. I'm not fear of death at all. I've had too many great experiences physical mediumship with Leslie Flint, who was the greatest physical medium in last, that, with the last ones in the 20th century that lived. And I heard actual spirit voices, which is a little cassette tape of my mother's voice. And, and you can all hear that on the internet, um, Leslie Flint and you go hear Queen Victoria, Houdini, all these people's voices. And they talk about the voice box that was used. So once you've had experience like that, and also the work that I've done for 40 years and seen other great mediums like Kelly and other mediums around the world work, you know, it to me, it just it validates. It just validates. Mm -hmm. And it makes me know that this time that we have on this earth is very short. I mean, 70, 80, 90 years in earth time is like that in the yeah. spiritual realm. So you want to make the best of those moments. You want to make every day count. It's true. It is so true. Um, let's see. Okay. Oh, oh, here we go. Anna Murphy. I had an out of body at 25 years old. It took 40 years to realize the bright white light was my own in my light body. There you go. And the profound oh, love I go. felt was my own perfect love you return to when you leave this body. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, That's Anna. That's great. That's great. And again, we get limited with our um, uh, descriptions here or, or, or terms that we use here because something might not be correct in a way that, uh, you know, it could be your own light that you're looking at and so forth. So, yeah. you know, higher self, um, uh, that voice of the divine, the light of the divine. It's all that. It's, it's just about pureness of love, yeah. whether it's us or that. Yeah. Laura says, Laura Essex says, we are getting back to the knowingness of the whole, the one. That's right, yes. Laura. Good to see you. Yes, the whole, the oneness. I'm the present nurturing yeah. energy. You bet. Uh, Nadia F, do you have to flatline to experience NDE? I don't think so. No, I didn't. I would have flatlined. Yeah. yeah, no. My soul was over there, though. But it certainly could happen. It could. Oh, that brought, sure, of course, they brought people back, back who flatlined. Sure. So Carla Donovan Campbell says, I have lived a spiritual life since um, I have I came back. And I helped many cross as well and help parents who have also lost a child like I have myself. James, you were part of my spiritual path. I read all of your books to help me understand what I experienced. Thanks, Carla. Good Wonderful. for you. Wonderful. Very good. Good work. Good work, sweetheart. Yeah. Um, oh, my gosh. 
let's see what else do Eating we have Hathorn says there's a book out there called conversation with god by neil donald walsh yes. very good book and it says to expect accept death not be afraid of it and always embrace it and life gets better very true Stephen. very very true and i know neil very well very very true message there um yeah except the good bad the ugly but you know it's part of life uh, yeah. yeah absolutely but let's i just want to mention this there are 10 or 11 i should say life-changing lessons when you've had a near-death experience the first one is be grateful the second one is let it go like let whatever it, it is just let yeah. it go okay yeah. so my third one is accept that some things are beyond your control lovely perfect number four trust your instincts oh, yeah yeah Number true. five, take calculated risks. Oh, that's great. Like somebody today was on your program and they wrote, uh, and you said to them, look, you can be a, a nurse and a medium or a lawyer and a medium or a therapist and a medium. That's a calculated risk. You can do it. You know, go forward in your life. Whatever you do, go forward. You got to jump in sometimes. Jump I mean, in. I, I did, I, I, did nine to five job and did mediumship. Not sure what, what would happen. Sometimes you have to jump in. Sometimes you have to jump in. Um, do what you love. Yeah. yeah. Is that Gosh. true? Stop judging others. Judgment is fear based. Yeah. It's fear based. Right. Spend time with people who matter. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Be kind. Be kind. Yes. Slow down. <laughs> yeah. Slow down. My favorite is thoughts are things and have energy. Watch your thoughts. Forgive. Life is yeah. really too short. It's true. Yeah, thoughts are energy. Exactly. What energy are you going to leave to the world? What are you going to give into the world? So it's that, that's that thing again with the matrix. What are you leaving in? What are you giving in? How exactly. are you paint that? Just nice light colors, pastel colors, beautiful colors people will love, or using dark colors, moody colors. People don't see those right. colors. What are you using to? What you, you know? Exactly. We have to read this one. This is Kristen King. She said, I was in a horrific airplane crash in 1969 with Allegheny Airline. I'm so sorry. I had a near-death experience, and for many, many years, I just wanted to go home. I saw three spheres that were my guides, and they told me not to cross to them. They came to me. I was in five, minus five degrees for six hours. My father was killed. I was 17. I ran away from home with my mother. My dad came to get me. Wow. 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 I have wow. chills. That is some that's, story. That's amazing, Kristen. That is amazing. I'm sure wow. you made it life based upon that experience yeah. i'm sure you have you yeah. have no choice yeah. That's incredible. oh my gosh terry ann claus does near-death experience necessarily mean that we leave our body temporarily or can we still be in a body and experience an nde in august of 2012 i'd got very ill from bleeding for three months straight i'd gone to the hospital on august 16th after doing all kinds of tests the doctors came back and told me that it was a miracle that I was still alive. A person's normal blood count is 14 and I was at 4.1. Oh my God. I cried and then a sense of peace came over me and I was ready to go home to God. I ended up having four something. Wow. Wow. Um, yeah. You know, when we talk about leaving our body temporarily. I, you know, I, I use the analogy of that the soul, 30% is, you know, here, but 70% is over there. And and how do we know the native experience that we just, go more to the consciousness of out of the body than in the body. Um, like my mind, I was still a part of my body, but my conscious and awareness are totally outside of the body. So that, that's that's a bit of saying you can be in both places at once, I guess. Right, right. But your conscious is the bigger picture, if you will. Um, because right now, as we sit here, we're on level, other levels. We're experiencing other levels. We're not remembering they're conscious of them here in the physical, but we're experiencing them on other levels around so us. So true. Body. Yeah. So true. Um, Cindy Marie says, unconditional love and gratitude are what I've lived since my near-death experience. Good. If that You've learned something. That's important. And you know what, Cindy, the word that I got was, and I just got that word from Kelly, you were reading that, and you've used common sense. Oh. <laughs> you've used common sense. So, Kelly, I'd add that to your list. Add that common sense. I'm adding it. Common sense, common number 12. Cindy Marie, common, common sense. I'm sure you sense. sense. That's Please for God. common sense. <laughs> so true. Renee, oh. here you go. Renee Hansel has a, a group, I A N D S. Yes, the group are incredible resource people. Thank you, sweetheart, for sending that. I, I've heard of them. I A N D S. Yes. Yes. Oh, my gosh. International um, Association of Near Death Experiences, I think it is. But yes, that's, is that I've what heard it is? Them. Yeah. And they meet once a year. I, I think it's in Arizona. They meet around the world, but they have um, in the U.S., I know they meet quite every year. 
Uh, Carla Donovan says, one thing I noticed after she had a near-death experience was I didn't st uh, stress the small stuff. I walked in faith and trust because it was so beautiful over there. It's the truth. There was a book that came out many, many years ago, and it was a series of books, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. Remember that? Yes, I do. Was a good-looking man, blonde-haired guy that wrote them. And I remember it was in a book tour in Seattle, and he was there at the airport. I said, thanks for writing that. Like, oh, yeah. And we were at the same time doing book tours. And then he died. He died in his mid-40s. I remember about his mid-40s. But he left behind great books. And it was Don't small, Sweat the Small Stuff, and then ones after that. And I remember that quick little five minutes or seven minutes at the airport, and it was just this exchange of energy. A nice, nice guy. And, oh um, and his wife carried on after him. But yeah, just remember. And didn't, that. wasn't it, uh, don't sweat the small stuff, and it's all small stuff? And it's all small stuff. Yeah. But he died after that? Yeah, like 45, 44 years old. Yeah. He just died. Yeah. Oh, like well, old. he did his purpose. He got in and got out. And he got out. And he was like an all American looking guy, yeah, like a volleyball. <laughs> player on it. it was just really interesting his energy was interesting it's a nice just nice peaceful calm energy oh my and uh, yeah it is working left wow wow i was gonna mention too there's a good movie if you haven't seen it that's about like a near-death experience it's really funny and it's good it's called ghost town have you seen it with ricky gervais <laughs> my husband did the music for it but it's a good movie but it was it's very similar to uh, now i had a traumatic brain injury but that was not a near-death experience so i did that was not a near-death experience isn't that interesting it's that interesting. was not but it, in this to suggest that movie kelly many people i know love that movie they talk about that a lot that movie. it's a good movie it's and it, he it, he dies in a in some sort of a situation and then he comes back and he sees dead people everywhere and that was my experience after my traumatic brain injury but i didn't have a near-death experience so but i love that movie and the music is great tracy held this one i understand james something about a negative type of nde hellish yes tracy that people have experienced that darker side it's not always light and angels and rainbows sometimes experience like a hellish some people reaching for them or it's dark or it feels evil or so we talked about that earlier that it could be a part of their aspect of their unconscious their subconscious self um, something that that's coming out to the surface mm -hmm. um, maybe it's a belief system so um uh, again could yeah could be a belief system could be a belief system yeah, absolutely sure. um oh here here's one brenda Parrish. hi brenda why does when one person talk about their nde experience they go through the light and some don't it's a good question, question. I, I, didn't go through the light. I don't I just didn't and i did and you did and mm -hmm. i did I go through a tunnel i didn't go through a tunnel and so, then not only that, but when I got out, it was like this, I want to say like a, I don't know, odd sort of a jello. Kind membrane, of a, membrane. That was it. Well, here's the weird thing. When I was doing a little research with Dr. Alexander, who wrote Proof of Heaven, he described the same thing. Go figure. Go figure. <laughs> Dana Cazzoni says, I signed up for your event on Friday. Good. Oh, she said, my dad passed in 2019 and I've asked him to come through and have you say, don't sweat the small stuff, because he said that to me all the time. What okay. Message, Dana? <laughs> That's for you then, Dana. I have chills. Yeah, message. I mean, I, I don't know. It's starting to happen already. Happen already. Today I was working with my on the, my uh, 12 o'clock show, uh, Soul Care, and my guides came through really clearly and okay. they were channeling. So um, I think Friday, part of Friday night, I'm going to do a channeling with my guides. Oh, okay. I think that's I'm gonna great. Start, start off with that, actually. So that I think that's a I'm, great. Oh, I'm I was watching you. And they, they were coming like, through. They want Amazing. to come through. I'm like, okay. So I think Friday, and I'm going to let them come I, in. You know what? I think they're coming through because there's so much philosophy and so much wisdom that needs to come out again. I think true. people need a lot more information. True. It's you really, know? really true. And you it's always true. have an interesting set of guides because you don't always have it, the same guides. Right. It is always interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm more, I really... Get, and the more I realize it and, and I'm aware of it, as I tell all my students, that I'm just a vessel. And if I stand to the side and just let them come through, incredible information comes through. Yeah. Because think of it, this grand information, this expansiveness has come down in dense, dense vibrations, this narrow, linear. So but if you I that away that. and give more space, more yeah. information can come through. <laughs> but you're a great vessel for that because you Thank always you. just open up. I don't care what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you because I. Uh, yeah. You know, we've been together. Oh, many I've times. seen you. You just, all <laughs> well, and I'm like, okay, here we go. <laughs> I've been um, I've yeah, people are saying they have to go back and watch. It was good. Michelle Pope Leslie, is it wrong to want to and experience a near death experience? No, but you know what? You can also experience it by going into a deep meditation. Maybe you don't need to do a near death experience. Maybe you just go to sleep exactly. and have an incredible dream that is very lucid. 
you know, so with your guides and having that yeah. with your guides, deep meditation, really, really good, good way. Again, go to my school, the JP school, JVP school of mystical arts, because there's some great courses there that and one day is a day in heaven. It's a one day course. And I bring you to the, those levels like the Monroe Institute. Thank you, Renee. And it's a one day in heaven and it brings you those different levels of consciousness and awareness and you meet your guides and your loved ones and you talk about your purpose in this life. So that would be a way of experiencing that without having to go flatline or go through right. you can do it in the living it's just yeah. bringing up a different level of consciousness so it's so that true just, thing to do. Just getting your level of consciousness up that's exactly right and uh there's a question here from arlene de weber de weber she says when will you be doing the writing i just missed it your writing class again oh next year okay. next year i'll yeah next year i'll be doing that next summer yeah okay. it's great my writing course is great. I, I love that. I'm right in the middle of medium two and medium three. So I'm visiting people in development circles and working with them on that. So, you know, it takes a lot of time up because I'm really, you know, dedicated to it. Yeah. So uh, it takes a while. Tracy Hildreth says, this is such a fascinating topic and a great reminder to be kind always outwardly and in our thoughts to ourselves and others. Yes. Thank you. Hey, Tracy. Oh, thanks, thanks, Tracy. So right true. on, sister. Let's ripple uh, it out, folks. Ripple out the love. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, Kathy Houston asked me if this was Ghost Town 1980. No, this was Ghost Town 2008. Thank you for the question, though. Uh, oh, by the but, way, uh, Kelly, um, yes. Neil Diamond, I was watching a show last night. Okay. And no, it wasn't this weekend. I want to remember the name of it. And it was something about, I'll tell you exactly what it was called, Midnight Mass. What? I've never heard of it. It was called Midnight Mass. I'm like, why haven't I heard of this? And it takes place in Crockett Island. I'm not sure where that is. Made this place up, perhaps. And all they had is sound like Neil Diamond music, and it was all it was, and it was like a horrific. It was a horror movie. But I didn't think it was that horrific. It was a priest go to an island, and all of miracles would happen. So there you go. But it was all Neil Diamond. I thought, is this Neil? Is this okay. Neil what was the name of this? Midnight Mass. Okay, honey, if you're listening, you want to ask look this up? about that because yeah. it sounded wait, like no, it wait. wasn't. Even, is he getting else, paid for this? This is the question. Yeah, I thought it was Neil Money because <laughs> uh, it really sounded like. And there were songs I'd never heard before. And it was about heaven and about the world. And it's interesting. Yeah. Oh, my God. Thank you. Carol McClain. Yeah. During my near-death experience, I saw entities like those shown on the movie Ghost. But my near-death experience was in 1978. And that movie was released in 1990. So it was years after I saw them. How fascinating. Fascinating. I remember when I was a little boy um, and I was... I woke one of the first experiences I have. I wrote about talking to heaven uh, when I was like eight, seven, or eight. And I was a Saturday morning while the kids were playing, you know, watching cartoons or playing tag out in the streets. I was in my bed asking to see God. I said, "I want to see God. Give me proof of God." And I don't know how much time it passed. And this hand came through the ceiling, an open hand, a golden light all around it. And I was almost like touched by that awareness. I'm like, "Oh, that's right. Of course, I remember now." And that was when I that was I put that talking to heaven. Wow. That was uh, an experience I had with that hand. And it was just that energy, that you light. You saw the that hand of that. God. Hand of God. Yeah, I think I called it the hand of God. Wow. 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 Well, everybody, tune in on this Friday, James. You're doing this the Friday, Week of Spirit. Yeah. Then Friday. is it um, Saturday, too? Friday and yeah, Saturday? Friday. Friday is good. Friday, yeah. Yep. So Friday in the following week, I'll be doing another one. Okay. So if you ever experience it, you know, please feel free to. And uh, it's a great evening. And I'll do some channeling at the beginning. You too, guys will love it. It's a great evening. It's so much yeah. fun. Oh, my God. Yeah. And, and Kelly, what are you up to? Are you doing something um, else? I'm finishing my book. Um, I'm home now. I'm expecting to see that book very yeah, soon. Very soon. Very soon. So I'm not doing anything right now. No more teaching right now. Give you a timeline here. Yes. But I will do things. On Thursday, I'm doing Ask Me Anything. So I have a show on Thursdays at uh, 7 p.m. Central Time. So Ask what's Me the, Anything. Pacific is six time? Six o'clock. Uh, five o'clock. Um, five o'clock Pacific. Pacific time. Thanks, Renee, for that. Anyway, well, James, I look forward to seeing you Thanks, next Kelly. week with another yeah. great topic, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks Renee. Renee. Bye, everyone. <laughs> You've been listening to Both Sides Now and Beyond, featuring spiritual medium and master teacher James Van Prague and spiritual medium and psychotherapist Kelly White. Jim and Kelly Show.